We do a lot of craft shows. And what do you think we found to be the best seller? What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. Our door hangers are great and they sell great at the craft shows. They are a high quality product. But you know what would be the cherry on top? is some personalization. We found at the craft shows that the items that we see walking by or the booths that we see with frequent customers besides our own are those with personalization. We really want to add that personalized touch to our door hangers. But neither one of us have that art of calligraphy down. So that is not an option. So today we're going to show you how to make some money making monograms using only Xtool Creator Space and the new S1 40 watt diode laser. Now the question of this video is, can we do this fast enough, inefficiently enough, to be able to do this at the craft show? So we're gonna be keeping some clocks, keeping some time, and see if we can replicate this process at the show on site. Kim's got her stopwatch ready. Step one, we're gonna create our design using only Xtool Creative Space, no other design software. Here we are in Creative Space. Xtool Creative Space is Xtool's free design software. This software is a program that you'll download. You can use this without internet access. It will connect directly to your machine. And this one instance connects to all of our Xtool machines. We don't need separate instances of this software. And we're gonna start with our text. When we click on the little text, a little box pops up in the middle, but you actually enter your text over here on the right hand side. So we're going to start with an M. And we already know that we want this to be Times New Roman. This is going to be our split monogram piece. Down at the bottom. Now it does have some Xtool typefaces, but then it does get into your system typefaces. So any fonts you have, you can use inside the tool. Let's stretch this guy out. Let's start by making him 8.5. And we want it bold. Oh, that's right. Let's bold this guy. <laughs> All right, now let's draw a box. Insert a rectangle. We're going to make an, a box about an inch high, or an inch and a half high, right across the middle. Right about there. We're going to grab both. We're going to come up to combine, but we're not going to combine them. Then we're going to subtract. So it subtracts that top layer from the bottom layer. Now I got a couple of different pieces here. We're gonna put it in another rectangle up in here. I'm gonna make this rectangle. I'm gonna unclick this little, we're gonna unlock this little lock here, which locks our aspect ratio. Aspect ratio. Thanks, Kim. We're gonna make this 12 inches wide and about a little less than quarter inch tall. I'm going to control C, control V to duplicate that. Drag this one down. Let's go ahead and make sure everything is aligned horizontal. I'm zoom in. I'm going to make sure these boxes here, these rectangles, just barely touch. Scooch this guy down. Is in. All right, I think we're all in. Right? Mm -hmm. Grab everything, go back up to combine, and we're actually going to combine everything with Unite. Now I have two pieces. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, do you want to fill those so that we can kind of see what that's going to look like? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Like. All right. There you go. Yeah. But this middle piece is too skinny, and I'm unable to ungroup them. So we're going to draw another rectangle. I'm just going to grab both, copy, paste, drag one of these over here, move this box down. Now what you're trying to do here is create the top piece and the bottom piece. Yeah, so I'm going to grab both. Now the rectangle should be laying on top. I'm going to subtract. I'm just left with the top piece. I'm going to do the same over here. Subtract. Just left with the bottom piece. Now I can move them around. We'll drag these back over here, and we're going to make sure they're aligned horizontal. 
All right, time for our our last name that goes across the middle. Back over to text box. We're gonna type in the name Melton. Is that correct? Yep. I hate typing in the names. And for this one, we're gonna use Jakarta signature. And I chose this font because it kept things. The letters were very close to the same size. There were no uh, low hanging swoops at the top, at the bottom, or large swoops at the top. And all right. So, what do you think about that? I think I want it stretched from end to end. All right. So, make it just a huge bit bigger this way, and I'm going to come up and unlock the aspect ratio. I'm just going to drag it out to the edges. Mm. What do you think? I don't know. Make it smaller? Let me see. All right, smaller. Uh, looks a little too stretched. Too stretched? Yeah, can you bring it back just a little bit? Why don't I have my hand? Scooch it back in. Or should I just make it taller? Yeah, let's try making it taller. Let's drag this bottom part down. Close, uh huh. Let me scooch it up. Let's engrave. Now back up. Alright, what do you think? Yeah, I think that looks good. I think that's what needed, just to stretch it out a little bit. Alright, so we'll weld these. Okay, right, so zoom in so they can see exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it. All right, so now that we're happy with it, I'm gonna click on the font again, and down here, I'm gonna weld these. But if I, let's click score so you can see why, and I'll zoom in. Yeah. See how they're overlapping? Now if I change these to cut, they're still overlapping. So each one of these letters will cut out of the other letter, and you'll just have a bunch of pieces. So we're gonna weld everything. And you'll see how it took out all those little tails that were touching and it made it all one piece. It's now an object that's no longer, it's no longer a text. And you'll see when you select it, you don't get your little text box up here. Anymore. You can't change the text. It is what it is. <laughs> we'll just make all of these cut. That's where we're headed. And then let's add the established date. Right? Let's do, we'll insert another rectangle. Here. Unlock the aspect ratio. I don't know, that's a pretty good size. Uh, let's type out our words. We'll add another text box. We'll put in EST 2023. And we'll also make this times. Oh. Times new open. Do you want this one bold also? Bold. We'll make a match. Uh, I think it needs the period. Thing. EST looks like it's floating a little bit. And can you fill it again? I It's hard for me to see with just lines in this design. All right, let me copy that rectangle and put on this other side. That seems a little thick. I know we don't want it too thin, it'll break. These guys? Mm-hmm. Right, well, let's bring it down to, what do you say, eighth inch? We'll compromise. There you go. How's that? Um, what are the ribbon holes? I'm not there yet. Oh, uh, they're, the ribbon holes are okay. eighth of an inch. Okay. Then, yeah, I would say about that thick. Okay. And then... I'm going to um, grab all these. We'll go up to a line, we're gonna align vertically, and then distribute horizontally. That way. Cool. Let's, let's engrave everything so you can see what it looks like. Let's make sure everything is aligned horizontally. Okay, I think it looks good. All right. That's way easier to see filled in. I can really, couldn't really tell. Let's draw a circle around this and make it a door hanger now. Let's try that circle thing again. 
Let me find a circle around this. Hold and shift. We'll come up top. Let's make sure it's 16 inches with the aspect ratio. It'll be 16 by 16. Hey, that fits pretty nicely on That's the round nice. already. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's give it some ribbon slots. So I'm going to insert a shape, basic shapes, and they got this like rounded corner rectangle. Bring this guy up here. Unlock the aspect ratio, and I do 1.125 by 0.125. Oops. I forgot. 0.125. I forgot the point. <laughs> Has a big ribbon hole, and it didn't take. What's wrong with my point? There it goes. There we go. All right, copy paste. Zoom in. Find this guy over here. Oh, is that what we want? I needed a. I thought it was a rounded rectangle. I it just made so it too. an oval. Yeah, it's kind of ovaly. Let me just put a rectangle in there. Well, can you do a rectangle with rounded corners? Let's see. Shape. I thought that would. Oh, here we go. There, you, there go. you go. That's what we want. That's better. Unlock. 1.125. Oh, I guess you have to hit in there. 1.125. Oh. It is already. Mm -hmm, you did it, yeah. 0 0.125. No. No, it didn't take it, huh? 0. 0.125. No, it does, definitely doesn't like the 0. Just put the point. Point. Oh, you know what? This is, I think, a quirky thing. Make it 1.125. 1.125. Uh-huh, hit enter. Yeah. And now change the 1 to a 0. I found this the other day mm -hmm. when I was doing something. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, every time I hit zero point. It does not let you start with a zero. Huh. That's good to know. Thanks, babe. And that looks like a much better written hole. Copy paste. I like this because it's kind of like Adobe. You see how it gives me those measurements in between and it tells me when I'm aligned. All right. Those are a little far apart. Make sure that they are aligned vertically. All right, what do you think? Hey, do you need a uh, little hole for greenery? Uh, great question. The sample photo uh, that I'm working from, this is going to be a wedding gift for someone, actually has the ribbon and bow kind of on the left-hand side. Oh, off to the side. Uh-huh. Okay, so you want to like a... It's going to cover it up. I'm thinking <clears> maybe... <throat> maybe something right there. Right here? Right, yeah. The the letter that is in the example photo that I'm looking at is an S, and so that's easy to push to the right. M does not push to the right. It is the full sign. So, so I say... I'm just going to copy, paste. I'm going to bring this down to like what? Half inch? Yes, something half of what it is now. Uh huh. Oh, it wouldn't let me do point again. I, it won't. You're gonna do 1.5 and then you can change that one to a zero. Enter. Zero. There you go. Okay. Isn't that crazy? So that's a little quirky thing. I'm sure they'll figure that out. Cock it to the side. And over here. Down a little, down a little. I think right there. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. Alright, let's go ahead and cut everything out. Let's make, well, let's do this. I'm gonna copy paste. Make a copy of it over here. I don't need this back. I'm gonna delete it. All of this stuff here, we're gonna move to the red layer. That's my cut layer. Now all of this stuff here, just the backer pieces, I'm gonna move to my cut layer, make those red. But I'm gonna leave these blue ones score. 
So now I'm going to set my score and then set for cut. Now I don't have my measurements or my, my settings yet. This was just the design piece, but I think we're good to go. I changed my mind. Can you put the ribbon hole in the center at the top? This, this ribbon hole? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I figured but there it's so close, I might as well. It's going to be touching the thing, so we're just okay. going to do a well, center version of it. When you first said that, I was like, I hope it's not the front. But as long as we're just moving the ribbon hole. Yes, I think that's pretty easy. Yeah, here we go. Like up in here? Uh-huh. Alright. Let's make sure everything is... Well, let's group these guys. Group. Group. Now let's make sure everything is fine. Moving it around. Yeah, there we go. Alright. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And one more thing, if possible. The score marks, can we make those just a little smaller than the cut lines? Uh, when you cut the letters on the left hand side there, it actually removes some material and you can see what sometimes people say, the pencil marks, quote unquote. Can we make it a little bit smaller? Yeah, we'll grab these, we'll go to outline, and we'll give it a negative outline of 0.01. We'll say OK, and we'll put it on a different layer so you can see it. We'll say green. Now if you zoom in, you can see it's slightly smaller. It's about a laser cut smaller than Perfect. the other piece. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to say cut. I'm just going to cut it, get it out of the way. And I'm grab it. this one, and it's Control X. I'm going to delete, and now I'm just going to paste this right back into place. Okay, great. Let's great. make sure everything is aligned on center. center. Yeah, looks. And it took out the middle of some of these letter pieces, so you won't see it on the inside either. And then let's put this back on the blue layer. Move to blue layer. I think total design time was about 16 minutes, but we could cut that in half, if not down to like 25%, if we had all of the monograms and everything split beforehand, Right. and we're just putting in the last name. Now, do you think we could do, or should we offer additional fonts, additional monogram styles, or maybe this just gives us the flexibility if somebody really wants something different to do it right on the spot? But I think for now we'll stick with the one font. Go with the one font. It's the font. Step two, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed a piece of quarter inch MDF. This one is 19 by 26. And that's because we're gonna run this through the automated conveyor system. So we need enough room for what we're cutting, plus a little extra room to make sure that it stays in the tension wheels and continues to roll in and out with the conveyor system. But we should be able to get the whole monogram out of this one board. Now I don't need to bring this whole board with me to the craft shows. I'll probably cut the backers out first and then just cut the top pieces out at the show. So I could probably get away with a lot shorter board. Yeah, the 12 by 20 laser boards, yep. Which we offer in our store. You can go check them out at kngmakeit.com. We also are gonna need some paint and we have our Foxy Hughes Outdoor Paints. Uh, these are also available in our store. We're gonna just do this in pretty much neutral colors. I'm doing stain, white, and black. Oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty basic. And some Starbond Thick. We're gonna use this to glue it all together. Step three, we're gonna make all of our cuts. I'm gonna bring the quarter inch MDF over to the X-Tool S1, and we're gonna cut out our backer and our top pieces. Time to make our cuts. The automatic conveyor system is installed. Our board is installed. We're ready to go. First thing we're gonna do is change our canvas to the conveyor feed. Now this gray area is the area that's no longer active inside the laser. So we need to move our backer down right to the top right here. 
Yep, just right, right next to it. Let's move this stuff off the canvas so it doesn't try to cut anything. Now we're gonna cut our backer and then we're gonna flip the board, move this piece on and cut the top pieces. And as a reminder, the reason why we're doing that is because the conveyor feeder requires an extra 10 inches to keep the board in the conveyor system on the tension wheels. So we can use that 10 inches when we turn it around and flip it and run it through a second time. We're just gonna make sure we have tabs on everything. So our score settings, do you remember what our score settings were? Yeah, 150. That was 150 power, I remember now. I happen to have it right here. Let me see if you are correct. Yeah, I got it. It is 150. Oh, that was close. And 50% power. So close, I was just one digit off. <laughs> Now let's select our cut layer or the red layer and this we're going to go 100% power. Give me a full hundy. Six millimeters per second. We want lower focus on and Kim suggests we go four millimeters. <laughs> Lessons learned. We want tab generation on so that nothing falls through and gets stuck as it's moving the material to and fro. And let's see. We want them by spacing, spaced out every four inches or about 100 millimeters. Tab size, half a millimeter. And then tab power, 20%. All right. Now let's measure our board. Here's the laser hand, these little crosshairs. Let's measure the actual thickness of our board. It's going to reset the laser head. That's why it's moving up to the upper right. Yeah, I like how the little red X moves with the laser head. Even this is over Wi-Fi, so it's a little laggy, but that's still really cool. All right, let's frame this out. sucker. Here it went to start the laser. I checked my notes for a quarter inch MDF. It is a hundred percent power. <laughs> it was eighth inch. That's a hundred and fifty. Now we're just going to move the backer off of our canvas and we're going to move our top pieces on the canvas and we'll check our material depth. Now we're going to frame it out. Let's make sure it doesn't go into the circle. Alright, looks good. Time to paint and or stain. This one's gonna be used for a wedding gift. This is a special order. So we're gonna do a distressing technique on that. We're gonna use our Foxy Hughes outdoor craft paint. This is meant for outdoors or indoor use. You can hang this outside. It does have all those UV properties in it. So it's weather resistant, UV resistant. For this one, I'm gonna stain the backer first and then I'm gonna add a coat of white paint over the top. The white paint on the top is so that I can distress it and sand the edges a little bit so that you'll see the stain through. Again, this is a wedding gift. Uh, we're going to bring pre-painted or pre-stained backers to the craft show. So I think I'll just do a set of white, black, stain, and maybe I'll give this option too. This is a little more work. Step five, time to assemble. 
We're going to glue it together with a little bit of this Starbond Thick. This will hold everything and this is great for hanging these outdoors. It'll handle the heat, it'll handle the cold. This glue dries in like 30 seconds. In, in less than 10 or 15 seconds, it'll be set up so that you can't move it. So you have just enough time to work with it, but it's perfect for doing these quick projects at the craft shows. Fast and strong. Step six, and now we have the accents. <laughs> We're gonna, this, you can see here that our backer here has three holes in it. It's going to have two for ribbon slots here. So for, this is for the hanger. And then there's a little hole here. We call it our little green hole. That's so that we can add some greenery to the top. And we attach it all with zip ties. Well, we attach the bow and the greenery with zip ties. For the hanger here, we're just going to slide this ribbon right through the ribbon slot, tie a little knot in the back. It is the best way we've found to hang it. A little screws, little nails, they well, were All of that a would nightmare. be cumbersome at the show anyway. She does this all day long at the show. Even if we don't have customers, she'll stand there and make bows. She could probably make these bows in her sleep. She's got a full bow tutorial right here. A full bow tutorial? A full, a full bow tutorial. A nope. Tortuarial? <laughs> a full bow tortuga. Right there. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Full boat tortuga. But we add ribbon hangers and bows all the time at the booth, so this will be no addition to it. So all I'm doing here is I'm putting this uh, greenery. There's a, a little V here um, at the end of each one. I am putting the zip ties right through the V. I'm going to put this, the, the two V's overlapping and I'm going to put the zip tie right through there and zip tie the whole thing together. Yeah, am I in your face? Nah. Is the camera in the way? Yeah. And now we're going to zip tie our bow to the greenery. Now this one, I have to make a little yeah, cross brace. You got a little double zip. Yeah, I got a double zip. And then I'll cut all these little extra zip ties off. So I'm also going to put this through the hole. Hold on, I'm going to get you so you can see. I'm going to make it so you can see, yeah. <laughs> now I'll cut all these extra little zip tie pieces off. Go. There we go. Now I don't always add greenery at the shows. This is because again this one's going to be a wedding gift, but you can. Uh, we have a link in our Amazon store down below where you can get this and I think this ends up being, what did I say, like 50 cents or something cents. to add this to your hanger and I think it adds a, a whole level of you know, dimension. I just think it looks a whole lot nicer to add this little greenery. And because it's plastic, it's also weather resistant. Yeah. Now that we've tested the entire process, I think it can be done at the craft show with a couple of tweaks. Right. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little display board. Option one, pick your backer. We'll have three different painted backers, black, white, stain, something like that. Option two, decide whether you want your name or the word welcome. Some people like the monogram, but they don't really want their name on their front door. So you can choose from several different or maybe three or four different welcome fonts. But if you want to add personalization, we can cut your name right on the spot with the monogram. That'll be an extra 15 to add that to your board. And then we'll have pre-made selections for bows that kind of go with the backers. So you, you can pick one, two, three, and I'll put it together and come back in 15 minutes. It'll be ready for you. It's like sign Chipotle. Yeah. What's my base down to paint a little extra for my guac. Yes, seriously. So <laughs> I think that that works and it will be great. And I think the time that it will take to prep these is, uh, is doable. They can go around and walk around for about 20, 30 minutes, come back and their signs should be all set for them. Ready to go. We are about out of time. We have to go get ready for a craft show. But big thanks to all of our patrons. That's our hanger family. 
We love them over there. <laughs> and that is the best way to support this channel. We have a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast with an after show. We have some free SVGs and a super secret Facebook group. Monthly Zoom calls. Lots of fun. Lots of extras. So be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, and be sure to tick that bell to be notified of our new videos each week. And uh, let me see if I can balance this before it goes off to its mm. final destination. Mm. I just gotta check the quality. Whew.